Hey everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to do a fun request that I got from Instagram on how to recreate the Grand Theft Auto San Andreas intro screen animation. So although you could probably do this in Premiere as well, I'm working in After Effects because I think the Shape tool and the Pen tool are a little bit more suited for this job. So to begin, I'm going to create a new composition, and I'll just leave it at the standard sizes. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a black background layer by going to Layer, New, Solid, and just leave it black. So press OK. Next, I'm also going to add a layer, new shape layer. So now we can begin creating our irregular quadrilateral type of rectangle shapes by grabbing the pen tool. And this is pretty easy to just freehand. You can make whatever design you want, but just to stick with the Grand Theft Auto inspired one, I'll create a couple little rectangular type of shapes here. Once you've created the shape as you like, can choose the fill and stroke settings. The only thing I'm going to do is just make sure there's no stroke on mine. I just want it to be the solid shape. And if you don't see any fill, just make sure you click on that and you can set it to white. Each of these closed shapes actually has their own path. So you see one, two, three, four. So if you want, you can highlight all of them by holding shift and clicking on them. If you want to adjust something about all of them, but we just need them as a reference. We don't really need to worry about what color they are because we're going to be filling a video inside of those shapes. So the next thing I have is just in my project media bin, I have a couple different videos. Let's grab this one, for example. So drag your video in there. Now, there's a couple different ways. You can always do anything in different video editing programs with layers. For example, you can just set this to multiply in this example and it'll work just fine because we have white on black and the way multiply works is it takes whatever the darker colors are on this layer and it impresses them onto everything underneath and of course the black is going to be solid black and the white is going to get filled in if you want to get a little bit more technically accurate you could use track mats so in that case you'd actually drag the video layer underneath the shape layer and choose track mat alpha mat of whatever that shape layer is. It's kind of like a cookie cutter. And this way it can be a little bit more accurate because you can do things to certain properties of the shape or you could change the background color to something other than black without having to worry about it messing up your shape. And for that added flexibility, I'm going to go ahead and continue using this track mat method. Now we want to make each one of these squares animate in on its own. So one, two, three, four, like we saw in the intro. So to do that, I'm going to drop down the properties of that shape layer and drop down each of those shape paths. And again, although there's probably a few ways you can do this, one way that I found works is dropping down the fill opacity of each one of those shapes. So let's first make them all 0% because that's the starting position we want to be at, everything at zero. And then we're going to work our way forward from shape one to four. So make sure you click that stopwatch icon to toggle animation. And what I'll do is maybe just give each of these half a second or something, just a little bit, and turn them up to 100%. Now, right now, we have linear keyframes by default. So you're, it's going to be like a gradual fade in, which can work fine if you want, just to keep it true to the inspiration of this. The Grand Theft Auto 1 just kind of pops in there. So I'll highlight these keyframes and right click and toggle hold keyframes. And what this does is it'll only turn from zero to 100 and nothing in between. So it'll be just from nothing to something. And as soon as that other one pops in, I will continue doing this for the other shapes. So make sure you turn on the stopwatch icon, move a little bit, set it to 100. If you want, you can set them to hold keyframes. So you can see here, I've done all four shapes. So if we play that back from the beginning, we should get a one, two, three, four, pop in. Now, I think that looks good as is, but again, just to teach you something extra and keep it true to the original, you notice in the Grand Theft Auto San Andreas intro, the video is actually a freeze frame until all four shapes pop on the screen. And then to achieve a similar effect as that, what I'll do is go to my video layer. So here's the video footage. I will right click, go to time and enable timer mapping. So you should see when you enable timer mapping, it'll give you these two keyframes. This is technically to allow you to speed 
or slow things down. But what we can do is actually just highlight both of these keyframes, make sure you have them both highlighted blue, and move them over in to the point that you want them to start. So I want mine to start, you know, right when that last one pops up. So I can use my timeline kind of as a marker there. And this way, the video clip will be freeze framed until it hits this keyframe, but it will still retain its original speed. It won't get all slow motion or fast forwarded. So press play. You see, it doesn't start playing until that. And if you're working with some music at the background, you'd probably want to sync these up to the drum beats or whatever bass hits that are in the song. And as a finishing touch, we can add the text and titles that we choose. So keeping it true to the original, I'll grab my text tool. I can just type in whatever I want. So GTA style intro. I'll use that old English font. Now you'll notice this kind of messed up my track mats because of the layer order. Layer order is really important in track mats. It has to be the layers directly above each other. So, so with something like text, you can just drag it all the way on top of everything and everything should go back to normal. But you see the shape layer should be right on top of the video that it's kind of cookie cuttering or track matting. So I've got the text layer right on top and from here I can build, position it nicely. You know, you can put it in the little pockets that have been created from the shapes that you made. With the text as well, you can have it pop up only after all the shapes have appeared on the screen. In this case, you can just kind of drag the red shape layer so that the start happens at the start of those keyframes. So once you do that one time, it's just a matter of fading out and repeating. So for example, you could trim the clips as necessary with option and the right bracket key so that they'll end. You could go in there and add fade out opacity keyframes, or you could even just right click and pre-compose everything, kind of group it together into its own layer, have that be like frame one, and then just do it again and again and fade them into each other. But that's the basic foundation on how to get that final result. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it below. Check out my channel and playlist for more tutorials like these. And subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for all of my future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.